Coming up on AgWe TV, Midwest Agriculture forms an Ag Policy Alliance to get positioned for the future. Late season rains may be too little too late for drought-stricken livestock producers. I'm Ann Bailey and we'll tell you about the challenges of exporting food grade soybeans during a pandemic. We'll check out soybean harvest in Grand Forks County, North Dakota. And a South Dakota dairy goes robotic to improve efficiency and combat the ag labor crisis. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. While little is known about how EPA will rewrite the waters of the U.S. ruler WOTUS, EPA Administrator Michael Regan said this week ag exemptions will remain. Since 1983, the rule has excluded prior converted croplands from jurisdiction. The Clean Water Act also exempts discharges from normal farming and ranching activities, plus conservation practices and construction and maintenance of irrigation ditches. But not everyone is convinced, especially after the unfavorable Arizona court ruling. We're about to go back into a fight on WOTUS like we haven't seen since the first time this came up, and the producers better be ready. Regan says EPA hopes to have a proposed rule reflecting pre-2015 definitions out for public comment in November. He says the goal is to write a rule that will bring clarity. A new political force for Midwest agriculture is being established called the Midwest Council on Agriculture. Former House Ag Committee Chairman Colin Peterson and former USDA Undersecretary Bill Northey have formed the Alliance of Ag Businesses and Farm Groups. Speaking at Big Iron, Peterson says the group will speak with a unified voice and be a political force for the region, since Southern ag interests have eaten our lunch policy-wise. It uh, wants to represent Midwest agriculture. There's uh, groups like in the Delta and the southern states that work on legislative type activities and they're going to create a Midwest Council for Agriculture uh, to represent some of the interests that are, are very particular to what happens this, in this part of the world. North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa and Wisconsin will be represented in the group. Input prices have risen substantially from a year ago and there continues to be a shortage of many products like herbicides. This may change what farmers buy for the 2022 growing season and when they buy it. Many are stocking up on herbicides like glyphosate and glufosinate now because they're tough to find, plus lining up seed due to anticipated tight supplies. My dealers all haven't gotten their new uh, loads of uh, semi-loads of Roundup in that they ordered last spring already. So Roundup is in very tight supply right now and it could change a lot of producers on what uh, genetics they'll be looking for. He says with soaring prices for inputs like fertilizer, that may also force some tough agronomic decisions. The price of uh, fertilizer is sky high right now, and so everybody's starting to look at uh, crop rotations coming into the new year, planning their uh, strategy out for applying fertilizer. The highest natural gas prices since 2014 are pushing up the cost to produce many fertilizer products and adding another supply chain challenge this fall. Three members of a South Dakota family will serve time in prison for their roles in a multi-million dollar grain marketing scam. A judge sentenced Jared and Tammy Stephenson each to five years in state prison and made them liable for nearly $5 million in restitution to farmers they defrauded. The Stephensons owned H&I Grain, a private grain elevator in Hetland, South Dakota. Documents show a total loss of more than $15 million, split between farmers and bankers. Jared's mother, an officer in the company, was given three months in detention for her role in the fraud. Soybean processing continues to expand in the region, and CHS is the latest to announce it's investing more than $60 million to update its soybean processing plant at Mankato, Minnesota. This will allow expansion of annual soybean oil refining capacity at the plant by more than 35 percent. The project will be completed by the end of July 2023. This follows an expansion at the CHS plant in Fairmont and is welcomed by Minnesota farmers and the biodiesel industry. We have an abundant supply of soybeans that could be easily crushed and, and used morally in the state of Minnesota and throughout the upper Midwest. Currently about 60% of the soybean crush is used for biodiesel. He says the climate change agenda is pushing global soybean oil demand as more countries increase biodiesel mandates and research is looking at biodiesel for aviation fuel. The pandemic is causing a slowdown in business for exporters across the region. 
North Dakota's Sinner Brothers in Bresnahan, known as SBNB, ships food-grade non-GMO soybeans around the world. But as Ann Baylor reports in this week's Ag Week cover story, transportation backlogs are holding things up. This is a monumental problem that we're trying to get through, all caused by a significant and severe pandemic. Bob Sinner says this year has been one of the most challenging of its 30 years in business. Sinner is president of SBNB. The company has been producing, processing, and marketing non-GMO soybeans around the world since the early 90s. In fact, 85% of their business is international. They use a complex supply chain made more complicated by COVID-related delays. Many shippers are choosing to carry only high-value cargo. It's a big problem, even worse for those shipping perishable food products. All the carriers have been doing this for several months. And we've been complaining and complaining that this is unfair. It's bordering on illegal. Sinner says they're still about 90 days behind on shipping old crop soybeans, and they hope to get caught up as the new crop comes in. We've never gone into new crop harvest without getting our exports delivered. This is an exception. Sinner says it's not limited to soybeans, and he fears American producers will lose customers. Whether it's grains, soybeans, cotton, fruits, vegetables, we're all having challenges. Everybody is, this is, this is not a North Dakota issue. This is a U.S. issue. Sinner says they have been working with the Biden administration to solve this issue and is hopeful they'll be moving again soon. In Castleton, this is Ann Bailey for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Late summer rains brought some welcome relief to farmers and ranchers in south central North Dakota. But as Mikkel Pates found, it may be too little too late for livestock producers. I'm just hoping and praying every day that we get big rains and fill up the water holes. <laughs> this was the hottest, driest summer George Bitts can remember in his 85 years. For half of those years, he's been an owner at the Napoleon Livestock Sale Barn. And he says this year, ranchers have been selling more cattle than usual but 10 inches of rain that came late in the summer may delay sales for some as pastures turn green again. Rain is welcome, but there's still a lot, a lot of places out there. The potholes are dry and people are still hauling water to the cattle and it's been a tough summer. It's just been a very tough summer. George's sons, Paul and Jim, also are partners in the barn. Paul says they usually sell 500 cattle in July, but this year they sold more than 3,500. He says producers have some tough decisions to make. Some may want to wean early to conserve grass for the mother cows. There's people all over the board. There's people that are going to wean early. There's people that have sold cows. One bright spot is that the market has improved and the late rain and greener pastures have bought time for some. Rancher Taylor Grunfelder welcomes the rain but calls it the year of I don't knows. All the guys I talk to, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what we're going to have for feed. I don't know what the weather's going to do. So it's really going to be up in the air. The Bitses say with all the sell-offs this year, they're already concerned about lower cattle numbers for the next few years. At Napoleon, North Dakota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. The Napoleon sale barn is one of the top three in the state for cattle sales. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take a look at early soybean harvest in Northeast North Dakota. Superior Grain Equipment is committed to quality and service. Protect your bottom line and your future with superior quality, protection, and reliability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. life are hard. That's why banking shouldn't be. Cornerstone Bank. Saline can leave a field unproductive, so agronomist Greg Johnson was excited when he found out about a product called calcene. Well, basically calcene, they spray it over the top. Uh, there needs to be calcium carbonate in the soil to, to start a reaction. That reaction in a nutshell is basically able to dislodge the sodium ion from the soil particle and allow the calcium to uh, take its place on the soil part particle and then we're able to flush those those the sodium out of the soil profile 
and down. And at some point we will start seeing things like this where this was black and now, we're, now we've got corn growing and that's an awesome story. Farmer Neil Johnson couldn't agree more. It is worth the investment. I mean, we've got growth, we've got things that are happening. Because if we didn't do anything, we'd have nothing. We'd be losing more and it'd probably be leaching out further. Between the drain tile and calcine, you see now that we have vegetation. Contact Jim Erickson or visit calcine.us. Shatter loss. It's been plaguing producers ever since the corn header was invented. Leading Edge Industries has the solution with Operation Harvest Week. Proven to reduce shatter loss up to 85% without pulling in excessive trash. The kits simply replace the deck plates and gathering chains on your corn header. Operation Harvest Sweep's patented design saves multiple bushels per acre, increasing feeding performance, and drastically decreasing volunteer corn. Order Operation Harvest Sweep today at harvestsweep.com. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. The combines are rolling on the Mets farm near Northwood, North Dakota. Katie Pinky has been following the Metses on their corn and soybean farm this season and checks back in with them to see how soybean harvest is going. I'm here with Tom Metz in Grand Forks County, North Dakota, taking a look at early soybean harvest. Tom, what are you seeing? Uh, kind of seeing what we expected, maybe slightly better. Um, still probably below average, but on a year like this, it's nothing to complain about being close to average. Is this the earliest you've been in the field for soybean harvest? Uh, not quite, but real close. 2012 was probably the earliest we've ever had, but this is pretty close to that. All right, let's go out and check it out. So tell us a little bit about what you're seeing this early soybean harvest. Uh, so yeah, so far we've only got oh, 300 and some acres done. Um, so we don't got a lot of results yet. A lot of variation within the fields. We've seen from eight bushels the acre to 60 bushels the acre in one round many times. So there's a lot of variance there. Same with the moisture. Um, we've seen stuff as low as 8%. We've seen plenty of it up at 18%. Most of it's blending off. First two fields averaged mid 12s on moisture, so not too bad at all. Yield wise, um, probably slightly better than we anticipated with the drought. Um, still probably below average a little bit, but considering the drought, um, we don't feel there's anything to complain about with what we're getting. What do you attribute that a little bit higher expectation? I honestly think that last rain that we got that we weren't quite sure if it was going to do anything, um, I think that made a big difference. Well thanks Tom for joining us and we'll probably come back later in the season and Sounds take a good. look at corn harvest and we appreciate you letting me hop in your combine today. Oh, Not a problem, thanks for coming out. Mets partners with his brother-in-law Richie in Osley Farms. South Dakota continues to see growth in the dairy industry and Lake Norton is home to a new $12 million robotic dairy expansion. More than 1,500 people turned out to see the new technology at an open house at Drumgoon Dairy last weekend. Rodney Elliott didn't plan to use robots at Drumgoon Dairy when he came to the U.S. from Northern Ireland in 2006. But in January, he added 20 milking units to Drumgoon East. It's our first endeavor into robotic milking. So inside we have uh, 20 De Laval V300 robots milking about 1,470 cows. This makes them one of the largest robotic operations in the state. Elliot says each robot milks about 75 cows a day and each cow spends less than six minutes milking. For me, the robot's about consistency. The robot does its job very well, very thorough, very consistent. It does the same job at the end of a 12-hour shift as it does at the start of a 12-hour shift. The system is voluntary, which lowers stress, plus cows in early lactation may get milked from three to four times a day. It really gives them an opportunity to dial in the number of milkings based on her stage of lactation and maximize her productivity. However, the robots also fill a growing need for ag workers. We try to use as much automation in this barn as we can because, again, labor is becoming harder to come by, more expensive, and the, the willingness for people to stand and do some of the jobs that traditional and dairy farms probably less and less. He says the $12 million addition will also have a positive economic impact on the area. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to an unusual pig operation in southeast Minnesota. And later, 
how this piece of equipment is funding scholarships. Challenges, we all face them at some time, but it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. They say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements, to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. At Advanced Grain Handling Systems, we're your full-service grain dryer and bin project partner. We'll handle everything from start to finish. These guys are all in one. That was one of the big draws. They were the general. They took care of the electrical. They took care of the cement. Took care of everything. Whether your next project is big or small, let our team help with it all. Visit advancedgrainhandling.com. Combines were rolling in the region this week despite a few rain disruptions. However, harvest weather looks mostly warm and dry ahead. Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. It is that nice time of the year here at the end of September, the early part of October, where there usually aren't a lot of weather concerns. We're kind of pre-blizzard season. We're kind of post most of the storms. You can still get a little thunderstorm activity, sometimes strong. You can get an early snow, but usually, usually this time of the year is relatively quiet. Sometimes this relatively quiet time of year becomes like it is this year, where it just goes kind of super quiet. So for the next couple of weeks, I really don't anticipate a lot of uh, tough weather across the region. It looks generally warmer than average, not particularly wet, perhaps not bone dry, but not particularly wet. But this time of year, wet, dry doesn't matter too much. We have gotten some moisture replenishing rains over the last few weeks in the Northern Plains and upper Midwest and so on. In general, it looks like kind of a doldrum pattern, kind of a quiet pattern. Now, the jet stream is not going to be immobile. There will be weather. As we start out the pattern here this weekend, we've got some pretty hot temperatures in the central and southern Great Plains and pretty warm weather really over most of the United States. A little cool pocket of air down into the Great Lakes and coming down through British Columbia. It's cold up in Alaska, cold across northern Canada. As we go through the week, There'll be some troughing or some low pressure building out along the west coast that will simply reinforce the warm air through the middle. So we're going to see temperatures getting perhaps as warm as 80 degrees into North Dakota, northern Minnesota. There may even be some 90s in some of this a little bit further south. I think the northeast will start cooling down as we go through the week and the Pacific Northwest will have some cool weather. But note as we get toward the end of the week, starting to see some shifts in this pattern. So the warm or mild weather will continue continue. The really hot weather will get pushed back down toward the Gulf Coast where it's a little more standard. And of course, the Mojave Desert and the Southwest will continue to be hot. As we enter into the second week, we're dealing with a lot of mild weather across the United States. And for the first full week of October, I'm not really anticipating 
that will change very much. There are some signs of a little bit of a trough uh, developing along the eastern seaboard, which will bring some cool weather <coughs> into Maine and New England and parts of the northeast and eastern Canada, mostly the Maritimes. And uh, the hot weather will kind of hang pretty steady here in the central plains. Most of this not like summertime heat, just uh, much warmer than average. And toward the end of the period, that would be toward the end of that first full week of October, we may finally see some cooling starting to take take shape into the northern plains. For this first week, the wet weather will be down uh, near the Gulf Coast, some scattered showers in the Great Lakes of lighter duration and lighter amounts. Most of the Rockies, central Canada fairly wet, not much rain down the west coast except for the far Pacific Northwest. The second week also looking fairly dry. There'll be some rain in the east, maybe some scattered showers in the middle, but a lot of mild dry weather. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there. Tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. We have products that no other companies have. That gives us a bit of an advantage and a bit of an edge and it provides some security to our customer base that we've been here, we're here to stay, and we want to still provide these new innovations to the customers today. It's cold granulated products where we're putting together multiple nutrients. We've got products in our microessentials lineup that contain sulfur and zinc, and we also have products on our potash side, which contain boron, which is a newer product for us, which is called Aspire. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Systems way good work, good pay in a good life. Let me live my way. Good work, good pay in a good life. Trans systems way good work, good pay in a good life. Let me live my way. It's a trans systems way good work. A southeast Minnesota farm is raising pigs in an unusual way, grazing by day but still utilizing housing at night. Noah Fish visited the operation and shows us how it works. Our whole philosophy in farming is that a pig, for the most part, knows how to be a pig better than I do. Dana Burtness raises about 75 pigs a year on her Nettle Valley farm. She had been running it as a fully pastured operation, but two years ago she started having them return to the barn for eating and sleeping. They're in charge of their schedule, so these days it's they wake up at first light and they wander out and graze and eat breakfast out on pasture for a few hours and then they all wander back in sort of as a herd and then um, usually when it starts cooling down again around 5 30 they come back out onto pasture and spend the rest of the day grazing. Burtness feeds her pigs organic produce from a nearby farm that isn't high enough quality for their customers. She's currently starting the annual process of sending a dozen pigs a week for butchering. The high quality of the meat means they're all spoken for already and she's pre-selling for next year. Our pork is is very unique and the price reflects that and so I'm super grateful that we have customers who are willing to pay the real cost of what it takes to raise pigs like this. In Spring Grove, Minnesota, this is Noah Fish for Ag Week. Burton says in addition to selling her pork locally, she has customers in Iowa and Wisconsin. 
One piece of equipment that was on display at the Big Iron Farm Show does more than just move dirt. It's helping to fund scholarships. Ashland Industries makes pull-type earth movers, but this is a special machine. All the parts and labor were donated, and it was auctioned off in memory of one of the company's owners, Bob Eater, who died of cancer last year. It went for $34,000, with all the profits going to a scholarship fund, which goes to students pursuing degrees in manufacturing trades. So everyone was really just completely moved by what our employees did and came up with the idea of doing this type of thing and creating these scholarships because you're buying more than just a scraper, you're creating a, a career path for somebody who wants to pursue these trades. The Steffes Group auctioned off the scraper online. Still ahead, Kristen Clark shares her favorite fall comfort food. Every dollar counts on the farm, especially in this year's dry conditions. There's a new technology that uses nanoparticles for more efficient delivery of nutrients to your crops. Rose Dunn gives you a look at how nanoliquid technology works. AquaYield was first introduced to this region in 2018 by Ericsson Custom Operations. Aside from the excitement of offering a new technology that works, growers across the Midwest are achieving higher yields and a better crop while reducing input costs through nanoliquid technology. No, no special handling, easy to use, four ounces per acre. So really low use rate. You can put it in furrow, you can foliar apply it. And I mean really all from between $3 to possibly $8 on a per acre cost to you to, to try it. So very inexpensive. To learn more about how Aqua Yield works, contact Jim Erickson at ECO at the number or email on your screen. Shatter loss. It's been plaguing producers ever since the corn header was invented. Leading Edge Industries has the solution with Operation Harvest Week. Proven to reduce shatter loss up to 85% without pulling in excessive trash. The kits simply replace the deck plates and gathering chains on your corn header. Operation Harvest Sweep's patented design saves multiple bushels per acre, increasing feeding performance and drastically decreasing volunteer corn. Order Operation Harvest Sweep today at harvestsweep.com. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. It's officially fall, and as the weather turns cooler, many of us think about comfort food. Kristen Clark, the Iowa farmer who writes the Food and Swine blog, is also a monthly Ag Week magazine columnist and shares videos on agweek.com. This week, she shares her tried-and-true recipe for cinnamon rolls, along with several tips for pastry perfection. Go to agweek.com to check it out. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week.